Hey Jens, how are you doing today? It is Monday. Monday, August 23rd. What? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uno momento. I'm going to turn off my autofocus. I think it is now off. So if we have any focusing issues, we'll adjust. But I'm sitting at my desk today because I thought uh, I wanted to do a quick video. I didn't want to have to set up everything over in the living room. So I figured I would sit up here at the desk and just have everything ready to go. Because it's been a while since I filmed the video. But I'm sitting here at my desk. It's Monday after work, Monday evening. It's 6, 8, 6 8 p.m. And I figured I would uh, hit record and check in with you all. You can see I have a new feature here in my dining room because I finally got a framed piece up on the wall. And this is my Stickadian von der Wienberg Autumn Forest Quaker. So this I, I've had framed for... Ooh, I think I framed it back in the spring, maybe April, May-ish. And then in the last, oh, maybe two weeks, I finally put the uh, backing paper on the, the framed piece. And then uh, this past week, I finally got that one up on the wall. And I also put up my... Let Freedom Ring by Layla Studio. And that is actually right above my couch over in the living room. So anyways, I am going to try to limit the amount of shaking of the camera because we are on my webcam. Uh, the video footage, because it's not, I'm not using my, uh, my phone, is not going to be as high quality, but we'll go with it. I have my coffee here. I have not used this mug in a very, very, very long time, so I figured I'd pull it out. So I came home from work today and all of a sudden I sat down in the chair here and I lost full steam. I just was, I felt like I was going to fall asleep. So I had to get a second wind. Now I have a second wind and I am ready to go. So first off, a couple administrative uh, things I want to say. Thank you to all to you. Uh, thank you to everyone who. Thank you everyone who has checked out my shop and has purchased anything that I had put up in the D stash section that previous to the words. Words. I just need some words. In the previous video, I had mentioned that I was going to put in some uh, some things that I was going to get rid of in, from my personal stash in my Etsy shop. I had done that. Many of you uh, that are viewers went ahead and checked that out and purchased some things. I also had put in some dishcloths that I personally made uh, with my knitting skills. And uh, you all had also purchased those or checked those out. And I appreciate all of you who had done that. The only thing left in my shop as of right now is this one cross stitch kit, which is a Lenarte Owl Kit. This is the only thing left right now. So this is still up for grabs in my Etsy store if you want to go check that out. This is the D-Stash kit. It is the full kit. I have opened it only to check it out but it is uh everything is still in there and uh not even touched barely touched just to see what is available uh just to see what it looks like but um it is a lenarte animals cross stitch collection that is the 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 kit that you are going to get so that there could potentially be some more things that I'm willing to put up into my D stash on my Etsy, uh, my Etsy shop. So always be on the lookout for uh, for those kind of things. I might randomly put some things up in there as I start. I, I'm kind of in a 
uh, let's clean out this drawers mood lately and just purge and feel refreshed. So that's where I'm at right now. Next up, I also want to thank all of you who have made a, uh, a gesture of goodwill towards my me and my channel. If you have uh, bought a coffee on my buy me a coffee link that is in every show notes section of my uh, my YouTube channel uh, and on every video that I post, I have a link that is buy me a coffee. Uh, if you're interested or you want to basically tip me for the the, the content that I put out on my channel, uh, you're able to do that. You don't have to. It's not required. Uh, it's just a way that if you want to show me some love and show the channel some love because there's something that you appreciate, uh, you're able to do that by buying me a coffee on that link. I did have a few people on the previous channel uh, do that, and I just want to say thank you to those people who did that. You know who you are. Okay, first up, I have a couple plant because I do uh, like to feature some of my plants on my channel. I have a couple plant updates that I want to show you. Um, I'm really excited about some of these plants that I have uh, today, and so that's why I'm going to show you them. I also want to talk about the fact that, well, hold on one second, I need a cup, uh, drink of coffee. And I slurped. So excuse me about that. So first up, I had mentioned many, 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 many videos ago about my issue with fungus gnats. And I've tried many things to get rid of my fungus gnats. And the first thing I tried was uh, mosquito bits. And that did seem to work a little bit, but it did not take away my entire uh, issue because it was just so, I had such a prevalence of fungus gnats. So then I did some more research and looking into it. And so the second thing I tried to do was beneficial nematodes. So I heard about a thing called beneficial nematodes. And so it's beneficial nematodes are basically microscopic worms that you water into your soil. So you put, uh, you get a, you get a refrigerated bag of powder that has your microscopic worms and you basically activate them by putting them into the water that you're going to water your plants with. You water your plants and then over a course of a week or so, they eat off the larva and the eggs that the, that the adult fungus gnats lay. So basically your adult fungus gnat is going to lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs and then those eggs hatch. The, the larvae that hatch from those eggs bury down into the pot and so the beneficial nematodes then will eat off the eggs as well as those larvae that bury down into the pot. So it's not a quick fix. However, over time, the fungus gnat issue resolves. I can safely say that the fungus gnat issue in my home has resolved as a result of, but then you also want to use uh, the mosquito bits as a, you know, you want to do a two pronged approach. So I did the beneficial nematodes as well as the fungus, uh, the mosquito bits on top to, uh, to help. So, and I now have very few fungus gnat issue in my home. However, so one, and I, I've showed this on during my plant, uh, parade or my plant tour, this is a, a, pl a plant that I got to help with fungus gnats. This is a, and the lighting in my video is very poor, but this is actually a very bright, vivid green. 
This is called a pinguicula gigante alba haupane. How hopan? I can't pronounce it. This is a pinguicula, basically. And a pinguicula is a carnivorous plant. As you can see, you can see all these little black spots on that leaf. Those are fungus gnats. So basically, what's left of my fungus gnat issue is resolved by this plant. And so this is doing an amazing, this is growing so well because of all the fungus gnats that it's eaten up. So I have it potted in this little uh, this little pot, and then I have a saucer of distilled water because you can only water these with distilled water. And is, it, this is watered from the bottom. This is water. This is one of my only plants I water from the bottom. And that is uh, my carnivorous plant. This is the only carnivorous plant I have, but it's doing very well. So the the plant basically digests the fungus gnats from on the leaves. And it's pretty cool. So that is a pinguicula. Pretty awesome. The other plant I wanted to show you, and then we're going to turn that off again. The other plant I wanted to show you is a pre pretty recent uh, purchase of mine. It is a heart fern, and I've never had a fern. I've never really been into ferns, but this one is one that I, I to be honest, I wouldn't have gotten a fern, but... At first I had it in, so I had lost the, uh, I had a plant that died and I had it in a pot that, I had this heart fern in a plant that, or in a pot and it wasn't doing too well. So then last night I potted it up in this new, in this pot. Oh, and it's dripping water everywhere. So. Uno mo All right, the, the plant that died was my primrose. And I had my primrose in a African violet self-watering pot. So I thought that by because the, uh, the heart fern needed to be in a pot that got consistent, even damp water uh, moisture. So I was thinking that that pot that the primrose was in would do well. Well, it didn't seem to be doing well in that pot. So last night I decided to repot it into a different pot. So I have it in this pot here. And there is my heart fern. Now you see it's, you can see the shape of the heart. There, that, that new leaf there. It definitely does kind of look like a heart. Um, or a spade, maybe. But it's not really fern looking. But it definitely does have, it grows like a fern. Which I, I kind of appreciate, but at the same time I don't. But it's very unique, and that's what I like about it. So it's, it's definitely not like a typical fern. So... I can appreciate that. But so you can see these are the older leaves and this is the newer growth here. So the newer growth comes in light green and then it hardens out to the darker green. So that is one of my new plants. There is a very heart shaped leaf right there. So a heart fern. And there is my plant update for the day. Let me put the plants back and I will be right back with some knitting. Okie dokie.
This mug was a Christmas gift from the B sisters, Olivia and Elena. B. Okay, let's talk some knitting. So, the first thing I knitted on was my sweater. I was, I had an issue where I needed to, last time I talked, I had to work my sweater back uh, because I made an error. I found the error and then I started knitting on it again and then I figured out that there was another error. I had to work it back and now I can't figure out what I need to do. So that is in timeout. So there's nothing to show you on my sweater. So the only other thing that I have worked on in knitting is dishcloths. And I have gone crazy knitting dishcloths. So the first couple things I did was uh, I've created, a, I, I knit a handful of dishcloths. Uh, so I used up some yarn that uh, leftover yarn that I had in my stash. So um, the the yarn that I had left over, over, I went ahead and used up, and this is all that I had left over. So this will be a set that I'm going to sell in my shop. So in the next uh, couple days, you can definitely find the set that will be for sale in my shop. So this set of dishcloths will be for sale and that's two dishcloths that I create. I finished up in the last couple weeks since I was on, um, since I last filmed. So there are two dishcloths. And obviously you can tell this is my favorite dishcloth pattern to make. I have it memorized. It's super easy and quick to knit. I can make one in a couple hours. So two dishcloths. Then, uh, I had to go to, I was off on the 6th and, no, was it the 6th? I was off on a Monday and Tuesday a couple weeks ago from work. So I went to Hobby Lobby on one of those days and I decided to go ahead and pick up a couple skeins of yarn. So dishcloth, dishcloth yarn. So what I did was I picked up some complimentary yarns so that I could do a few more sets of dishcloths to put in my shop. So I went ahead and got started and I created, I did one dishcloth. So this is a nice kind of avocado pistachio, I think it's called pistachio maybe, pistachio green. We have a slate gray. And we have a multicolor. And as you can see, they all complement each other. So that will be a set that will be in the shop. So, I did that set in a weekend. What am I doing? There we go. So those three were done. So that's five dishcloths down. So we have those ones. Then I went ahead and I wanted to use up that yarn. So I did another gray one. I did another multicolor one, but I still need to weave in the ends. And over on my couch is the green one. So the green one is about halfway done and I will have that one done by the end of the week. So we will have two sets of, I will have two sets, two sets of these as well to put up in my shop. So 
If you're looking for some dishcloths and you weren't able to get them that, uh, and you really like this color set, um, be on the lookout for uh, these uh, in the shop if you're if you're interested in buying some of my dishcloths. And if you're if if you're interested, I'm thinking about you know whenever. I like doing dishcloths because when I'm drive, when I'm riding in the car or when I'm at my friend's house and we're watching TV or if I just need to do something that with my hands and I'm working, um, you know, I'm watching TV here at home and I'm just too tired to stitch or knit on something that takes um, a lot of uh, mental focus, dishcloths are something easy that I can work on. So it's always nice to be able to then I don't use a lot of them, so it's it's nice to be able to put them up in the shop and uh, give them to, or to sell them to somebody who is interested in uh, acquiring something that they can then use for for themselves. So there is the knitting that I've done in the last couple weeks. So. Seven and a half dish cloths. So that is my knitting for the last couple weeks. So if you're interested, make sure you, uh, you hit uh, the heart button on my Etsy store so you can get notified whenever I post um, those listings for, for the dish cloths. I should be putting them up in the shop sometime in the next couple days. All right, let's talk a little bit about cross stitch. I only have two projects that I've worked on in the last couple weeks. I've kind of been monogamous. So monogamous in the fact that I've been working solely on one project at a time and not to completion for the, well, kind of, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. So the last, the last project that I talked about in my previous uh, video, it was the, the uh, Queen Elizabeth stamp or the it was the postage stamp by Fiddlesticks AU. That is a pattern that you can find on Etsy. It's uh, the, the Etsy store called Fiddlesticks AU, A-U, Fiddlesticks, F-I-D-D-L-E-S-T-I-C-K-S, A-U, all one word, A-U, Fiddlesticks AU. I now uh, finished that. I have made a minor modification to the pattern uh, to make it more personalized. So I will, sh uh, you, you can, I think you'll figure it out. So here is the finished piece. And so what I did was, this is you this is on 18 count devosa 18 count devosa so it's like an even weave so it's not it's not ada it's uh 18 count even weave called devosa so it's two strands i think i did two strands yeah i did two strands two strands of dmc over one uh one one strand of devosa eighteen count so maybe it is kind of like ada i don't know it's eighteen count eight uh eighteen count devosa Take it for what it is. This is a brown Devosa I had just laying around from um, whenever I went to the New Jersey floss tube retreat. So the the I use 
two I made two modifications. One, the pattern it calls for green uh, DMC. I changed it to blue. And two, the two. <laughs> um, this is supposed to be a first, uh, like a one ST, because it's a first. Uh, it's a first class stamp, and instead of it being a first class stamp, I wanted it to say two because Queen Elizabeth is the second Queen Elizabeth, and the 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 fact that it's a first class stamp doesn't hold any meaning to me because it's not a US postage stamp for me. You know, it's not a US postage stamp. So it didn't matter to me if I, it, like it made no sense to me that I had a first there because she's not Queen Elizabeth the first. So for someone looking at that in the US, it didn't make any, it didn't relate. So for me, I, I changed the, I changed it to a two so that it made sense because she's the second. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. So the, since the last video, the last video, the only thing that was done was the light blue. And then since then I did all of the, uh, all of the dark blue. And there is, uh, so she is now completely done. So I, the, what I need to do is figure out how I'm going to finish it. This is not for me, this is a gift for my Anglophile friend, so who loves Queen Elizabeth, who has almost an obsession with Queen Elizabeth. So I need to figure out how, how best to finish it for, for my friend. Not sure if it's going to be a pillow or a flat finish or yeah, not sure yet. So, or if it's going to go on a box or what I'm going to do, but figure it out. So there it is. I think it turned out really well. I was kind of hesitant with the fact that it was on the Devosa. I didn't like the way that it was looking as far as the... Uh, the coverage at first but I'm really really pleased with how it turned out now that the blue and everything else is in it so there it is 18 count Devosa two over one And it's called postage stamp, I think. So that is what it is. Coffee break. All right. The last thing I start I worked on is also a new start. So, and bear with me as my printer at the time was kind of low on ink. So the colors are not the greatest. But this is, uh, this was a, um, a, this is a stitch along that I am doing with Donna Ray, Flannel Jamie's Farm. And I am doing this for my, this is actually a stitch piece that I'm doing for my mom, who she, who knows that I'm stitching it for her. However, mom, if you want the finished look to be a surprise, then you need to like turn off the video and not look at anything else. Otherwise, if you don't care if it's going to be a surprise or not, then you can continue watching. Because um, you know that I'm stitching it for you. But anyways, here is what I'm stitching. This is by the Bay Needle Arts in my father's house. You can find this on her Etsy store. Uh, I found I originally saw this piece on her Instagram page, and we all know I love uh, by the Bay Needle Art designs, surprisingly, because you know it's kind of unique for me. But 
It's by the bay needle art in my father's house. So I bought the PDF version and then I printed it out. But you can buy a PDF on her Etsy store or you can buy the uh, the printed version and have it shipped to you. The PDF version is basically the printed version in a PDF. And then you just print it out or put it on your device. So here is what I have done so far. I am, I am stitching this on, bear with me and I'll go get the tag. I am stitching this on a color in cotton, 32 count Belfast linen hand uh, biscotti. So it's a color in cotton biscotti, 32 count. And here is what I have done so far. So I'm, I'm stitching this two over two. Yeah, two over two and I have the house done. And I need to put something behind it so you can not see through the fabric. And there we go. So, that is what I have done so far. So, I did make some minor modification. I did make a minor modification. So the only thing I changed so far on the pattern is instead of the, the color of the grout or whatever you want to call it between the rows. So it goes the whole way around the, the building and then it's also the, the same color as the roof, this, this top part of the roof and then the chimneys. It was supposed to be a much lighter color. So instead of do, using that color, I did a dark, a slightly light, I went like two shades darker, only because I was worried about it blending into the color of the fabric. But otherwise, I really like the way it looks. There are two different ways that you can do the roof. You could either just stitch everything all as cross stitches, or you could do cross stitches and road stitches and I chose to do the textured look of the cross stitch slash road stitches and I absolutely love the way that it gives texture. I think it gives it a very um, traditional old look and I, I really like the way it looks. So I finished out the, the foundation and it, while like you don't have that stark light color in the foundation stones, I like it. I think it gives it a very subtle look and I think it looks really, really traditional and a very nice home. So I'm going to be putting this away now that I have the home done. I need a break from this piece and I need to work on something else. But I think that's a great stopping point for now. And I think it's looking really, really, how many times can I say really today? I think it looks fantastic. So there we go. That's my progress for you. So I did two pieces. I finished the small. I started something new and I have no idea what I'm going to work on next. I'm kind of feeling the urge to pull out something that I haven't worked on for a while and see where we can get to. Maybe the long dog samplers maybe heaven and earth designs. I don't know. But we'll see. I need to get moving and get some get some finishes. I don't know. That's what I'm feeling right now. So, with that, I hope you all have a wonderful uh night, a wonderful day. I don't know what it is. Uh I I hope you have a fun time stitching and crafting, knitting, uh diamond painting gardening. And until I see you again, as always, don't forget to always be creative.